What's going on guys? Back again today to talk about the BFR Longboy, the 10 inch 4570 model. Now this isn't going to be a crazy in-depth video or uh, an extended range time video. It's just going to be a quick overview, my first impressions of the pistol, of the revolver, and just kind of go over the spec that I got, why I got what I got, and just give you my overall experience, you know, uh, with the with the gun and just the the company in general. So if you're not familiar with the company BFR, it stands for Big F***ing Revolver. No, it stands for Biggest Finest Revolver. But I think to the general population, it's known as the former. So it's just big. They make some big revolvers, various calibers. Like I said, if you're not familiar, they're a division of Car Firearms Group. You might be familiar with Car Firearms, so Car Firearms Group owns a couple different divisions they have a couple different divisions underneath its umbrella and uh, one of those is magnum research which does your desert eagles and bfr and auto ordnance so there's a couple different companies there and they make a lot of great products and i've been a fan of desert eagles for a long time but enough of that let's get on to what we're talking about we're talking about the bfr i got this in 4570 10 inch barrel with the bisley grips so why did i get the spec i got this spec because some years ago i would say maybe five years ago i was walking around a gun show and i saw this exact revolver sitting in a case and i was like what the hell is that thing it's huge right i mean it's just what, what does it shoot and the particular one was it was a 4570 10 inch barrel and had these Bisley grips on it. I just thought, man, this thing is just massive. I mean, sure, it doesn't it doesn't fire the largest caliber. So, you know, they make these in the 500 Smith & Wesson. And I've never shot one. I know somebody that has one just through Instagram, and it looks like it's it's something. I mean, I've never shot a 500 Smith & Wesson in a Smith & Wesson revolver, but I mean, you know you can customize these things any way you want um, but back to this so that's why I got this spec I saw it and I was like man I want to just just it's just huge just it's awesome so I got the 10 inch barrel also just because it, it's just obnoxiously long it's it's you know approaching rifle length even though it's only 10 inches it's just huge I mean it's just a long freaking gun and I just thought the look of it is awesome now, if I was gonna carry this thing, if I was somebody that went out you know, hunting a lot and wanted to use this as maybe sort of a secondary, uh, but don't get me wrong, there's photos and there's, there's footage of guys that hunt with these things. I mean, you can take down some game with these pistols. I mean, you can mount yourself a scope right on the top here. It comes pre-drilled and tapped to accept uh, a, you know, a scope, put a pick rail on top. You can get a pick rail from them as well. You can put any kind of optics you want on the top so you don't just have to use you know, the, the irons. So that, that's a nice little touch there. But if I was gonna carry this thing, you know, there's companies that make leather rigs for this thing, chest rigs. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it here and I don't have one, I wanna get one that they make accepts they make one for the 10 inch model and you can carry it around on your chest so it's a chest rig and you know when you're ready to go instead of having to draw some long barrel you know from your hip you can just it's right at your right at your chest level and you can just bring it right out um, i've yet to try one i know they make them i'd love to get my hands on one of those and just just to use it i mean even if you're just out at the range walking through the woods whatever it is i mean It'd be a, a cool little rig to have on you. Now, if you if you didn't want to just get a stock form BFR like this, they have their custom shop, and the custom shop you can do whatever you want, whatever caliber they offer. Many many different calibers. You can build your own, spec it out to however you want. Different finishes, different barrel lengths, different grips. I mean, you can just you can do it up. Uh, but this was just like a stocked model. This is something that they stock and you can get right off the shelf If you want to do that now again, I went with the Bisley grips and the glare is going to be kind of hard to pick up But in the in the in the trigger time portion of this video It might come off uh, come across a little clear But these it's all you know hand fitted grips everything's uh, this whole the whole B 
BFR line, even if they're not custom made. It's all hand fitted stuff. So that, that's a nice little uh, you know, plus about them. It's not just like a production, I mean, in a production in a way, but it's not a, you know, assembly line type of thing. I mean, you got guys that, you know, hand tune these things to make sure they are the best possible firearm you can get. They also, so what they also do is they have a, a rubberized grip. And the guy that I know I'm talking about that has the 500 Smith & Wesson got it with the rubberized grip. And that's probably, if I had to, if I had to make a recommendation, I would say that the rubberized grip would be the way you want to go if you're actually going to be hunting with it out in the weather, out in the elements. And even, I would say, even just taking it out to the range because not that it's harder to handle. I've never shot the one with a rubberized grip, but shooting this one with this grip, not that it was slippery because it wasn't wet outside when I was firing it. It's just, I, I can imagine that the rubberized grip one would be more comfortable. And I say that because shooting this thing, it kicks. 4570 in your hand and not in a rifle, this thing wallops pretty good. And I mean, it was it was really smack in my hand. And I think with the rubberized grip, it would be a lot smoother shooting as far as comfortability goes. So a little bit more about BFR. So if you're on Instagram, I would suggest you follow BFR because the guy who runs the BFR page, Brett, I've talked to him a, a few times. You know, just DMing, like asking different questions. You know, you know what 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 are the possibilities with this? You know. Could I, you know, change anything out, send it back and do different things? Um, really helpful dude. He knows his stuff. He's the head builder, uh, shop manager uh, guy over there. I mean, he just, he's the dude that if you follow BFR's page, he's the guy that posts the behind the scenes videos, you know, putting these things together and, and fit and finish and, and doing all the filing and the, and the test firing. So what, what I like about that is you don't get a lot of companies nowadays that that post that behind the scenes stuff i mean i just think it's really cool to go ahead and see like the inner workings like the behind the scenes of the company of the manufacturing of them actually putting the time in to to do the the hand you know filing of the grips to get that perfect contour to do the filing and do the fit and finish of the receiver and the barrels and just you know doing all of that Another cool thing uh, about what you can do to customize this, if I wanted to, I could send this back to BFR, and if I wanted to purchase another cylinder for it, I could get a 450 Marlin cylinder and be able to swap these out since the, the barrel diameter is gonna be the same since this is a 4570 and the 450 Marlin. He's telling me that I could purchase a 450 Marlin cylinder and be able to swap out calibers. So that's a cool touch. Um, why I didn't go with say like a 3030 caliber or even say like this, the 500 Smith & Wesson. For, I wanted, it was between, for me, it was between the 3030 and the 4570. But I went with the 4570 because I have a rifle, I have the Henry rifle that shoots 4570. So I don't have anything else that shoots 3030. So yeah, 3030 is less expensive than the 4570, but just for, for caliber commonality, I can still just buy a bunch of 4570 and be able to shoot it in multiple things and not have to worry about do I have enough 3030? Do I have enough 4570? I have, you know, a couple different platforms that'll shoot the 4570. And that's why I went with the 4570. But it's nice to know that if I wanted to go for a 450 Marlin, I could just buy the cylinder and keep the, the revolver and, you know, essentially have two different guns, two different calibers in, in one gun. So that's a cool plus for that. All right, guys. So let's get to the range. Let's put some trigger time in with this thing. And a caveat before we start, I will say this was an impromptu trip. It was right after work. I went straight from work. I forgot almost everything because it was a, it was a rush job. I forgot my eyes. I forgot my targets. Uh, when I got there, the batteries I had for my camera that were charged, all of a sudden both of them were dead. So I couldn't use the, my camera. I had to use my phone to film. And of course, as I'm using my phone, it, it was cold outside. It was like 40 degrees. The battery on my phone is dying. It kept telling me I got low battery. So it was, it was, getting, it was also getting dark. You probably can't too, tell too much on the camera, but it was getting dark. I, I, didn't, I had 
limited time for light. So there's a lot of things working against me here. So it was just a quick trip. So here it is. All right, guys, let's put some trigger time in with the BFR 4570 10 inch revolver. So what I'm shooting is a 405 grain from Steenel. It's going 1300 feet per second if it's out of a 24 inch barrel. This is uh, the more lower recoil stuff that they offer. So I decided to put that in this because even though this is heavy, it'll, it'll handle, you know, it'll help negate some of the recoil. I'm still not going with any of the, the big boy hot stuff that they offer out of this. Not right now. So let's shoot it. I'm going to put one in to start it off and let's see what it's like. Here we go. My God, I'll tell you what, one round, that's all I put in here. I am, I am surprised how tame that was. I was expecting this to be crazy recoil. I was expecting it to, you know, really smack my hand and, and hurt my hand. Uh, this is by far for me the most powerful handgun i've shot revolver i mean the desert eagle 50 ae doesn't pack the wallop that this is going to pack but man i don't know it's getting a little dark here the camera's probably not picking it up let's put that's that's loaded up let's put all of them in there and we'll shoot it uh, i've forgotten everything today i've got no targets i've got no eyes uh so i'm just shooting at the backstop just to get out here and shoot this thing to give you my impressions of it first impression so far 45 70 first first shot fired out of this for me it's not bad. I want to get I want to get a scope for it. Got to get a small uh, pistol scope. Let's load it up. We'll do it again. All right, guys. So let's do it again. Five rounds loaded up. Let's just shoot them off. I'm not gonna try to go real like speed shooting or anything, but let's just shoot them, you know, pretty quick and see what it's like. I think I flinched on that last one. I'll tell you what, shooting them like that, you definitely start to feel it in your hand. You can see the indent a little bit that it's left in my palm. It really started to kick. Um, I'm not sure if that was me, maybe loosening my grip a little bit towards the end there, because this is a big revolver. I mean, I don't have large hands. I got probably, you know, just your average size hands, but I mean, this thing is a handful to hold on to, not, not because it's awkward or anything, but just because it's, it's just large. And you know, that, that revolver style grip, you know, that real angled grip, it, it's really, it's, it feels a little weird to really get a hold of um and get like a real nice nice purchase on because you know you're used to those or i'm used to those just you know more traditional at, as of today traditional you know semi-auto pistols so it's different um to really get used to that grip and really find find where you want to hold it so of course my battery's dying on my my camera too so all right let's kick it back into the studio and we'll go over some final thoughts and uh we'll finish it off all right guys you saw that I'm in the video, I'm playing it off. But let me tell you, the first shot, all good. The second round when I shot all five, I think I was trying to, trying to do it too quick and I wasn't getting my grip perfectly back in line. So every shot, this thing was just smacking my hand. I mean, by the last one, I mean, it just felt like somebody was punching my hand every time I pulled the trigger. And let me tell you, it's an experience. And Brett, if you're watching this video, don't know if you'll ever see it, but if you're watching this video, I don't know how you test fire these things all day, man. I mean, the 4570 alone, I, you post the videos of like 3030s, 4570s, 500 Smith & Wesson. I mean, you, your hands must be made of steel because that, that, is, that is some good work, my friend, because these things are no joke, no joke. 
But all right, guys, I mean, that was it. Tell me, what are your thoughts? Would you buy one of these? You could see yourself hunting with if you're a hunter or just taking it as a range toy. I mean, is the 10 inch barrel too obnoxious, too long for you? Would you rather get it in something like a seven and a half inch or do a custom and get something like a crazy, like a two, three inch barrel? I mean, you can do anything to these. So all right, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. That is where I'm most active, at SteveMP5. But until next time, thanks, guys. Appreciate the support, and see you next time.